Really? <laughs> Hello! Hi! <laughs> we're just dealing with the technology. I think we're live. Are we live? <laughs> yeah. Please, is anyone out there? Hello and welcome to our Facebook Live with Shrink Squad for uh, the Shrinkology Solution. Mm. I am Dr. Meg and this is the Louise. superb Louise Axon, diet expert. So, we are talking today about yes. the dreaded weekends, how difficult it is to survive a weekend. Mm -hmm. Because we've had so many responses from shrink squatters saying that they're fine during the week, they mm -hmm. stick really well yeah. to any diet plan, and then weekend, all yeah. bets are off, it all goes horribly wrong. So, we're, we're here to, tonight to talk you through various ways that you can make the weekend a really proactive part of a an ongoing long-term um, healthy happy eating regime absolutely and that's so key because um, whatever weight loss plan you're on it has to be something that you can stick to um, for the rest of your life really and as we always say in shrinkology if it doesn't have that maintenance phase then it maybe look for something that you feel that you can really stick to and that includes weekends so it's also important though to do some of the psychological work that's that's in the book for for each of our types as well isn't it yeah i mean one one, one thing i thought we were going to talk about first off is why weekend why are weekends so blooming difficult yeah hi jen by the way hi Ker. Hello, Ker. thanks for joining us so what what is it about weekends that's so hard okay so one reason why weekends are hard is we don't have the same routine we have in the week do we so it's a bit of a free-for-all and we also we work so hard don't we we work incredibly hard in the week so when it comes to the weekend it could be a sense of well i, I deserve to to go out i deserve to have that extra glass of wine i deserve to have that you know extra course in a meal mm. um and one way to kind of tweak that is to look at the week as a whole. It's really important. So the weekend is just part of that. So there are some practical things we can do at weekends as well, aren't there, Louise? Yes. So, well, well one of the things that, that is really important is to plan for the weekend. Yeah. So just like we recommend in Shrinkology to set aside some time on a Sunday mm -hmm. to plan for the week in terms of what's your social life going to be like? What are you going to be doing? and how can you eat healthily and to factor the weekend into that so that you know up front mm -hmm. that it's going to be all bets might be off on Saturday so what can you do to kind of curtail that because socializing is a big part yeah. of, of the problem yeah. and makes and it I very hard. And I have a question actually, um, now we have the the iPad <laughs> set up um, in a way that I can't really see we have the, to go questions, sideways yes. the question. Okay, hi Jen, my downfall is booze, yeah absolutely. Um, this is a a major problem at weekends isn't it yeah Lou? it really is um and i think some of that is that i deserve it part but also once we've had a couple of glasses of wine or a couple of g and t then all the willpower yeah, goes out the window absolutely. completely and you eat you i, I personally mm. will nibble and pick and nibble and pick if mm. i've had a couple of glasses and then worse if i wake up the next morning with a bit of a hangover mm. i'm craving carbohydrates and mm. craving sweet things so alcohol derails yeah the whole thing for me absolutely booze is a real issue for sure so one of the things that we know from the research is that we are either starters or stoppers and there are slightly different techniques um, for both um, I think for quite a few of our types um, we are the starters so once we start we can't stop so it's a bit of a Pringles effect so one way to deal with that is just a little bit of a delay isn't it Lou? So delay yeah. either the first drink or or have a have a soft drink first yeah. and then an alcoholic drink and then a soft drink and an alcoholic drink to try mm -hmm. and bring in some kind of um, structure to it. Mm -hmm. But the other thing we were talking about was um, to try that fast forward rewind trick. Yeah, yeah. How pause. does that work? Okay, so the pause and rewind trick. So. This needs to be done before you finish that first bottle though of wine for sure because by that point the frontal lobe has just given up the right. throat and it's gone. So what it is, okay, so if you imagine the scenario and imagine you're a video player um, and think about what would happen. So if you would have 
that whole bottle of wine and the next one, how are you going to feel the next day? And really visualize this and imagine it. And so you're playing it. the video. Yeah, you're playing. So start by playing the video. Play it once and then go back and pause at that moment just before you've made the decision to have that extra glass of wine. And then check in with yourself and see how that feels against the initial plane of the video where you've gone all the way through to the nth degree and just compare in your mind. Now all this does is allows you to make a more rational decision before you head in but I say again it has to do has to be done before trying yeah. to do it at the time. A bit is, of planning. Yeah yeah somewhat difficult. So there was another thing that we were talking about before Louise wasn't there about questioning is you know Having 10 points any better than having maybe four We're not talking five. about Jen here, by the way. No. I don't think you're a 10 point girl, are you, Jen? Maybe? maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> but is, say, the whole bottle. Will the whole yeah. bottle make you feel even better than two glasses? Um, and to really think about it before mm. you start, is two glasses the optimum? If you could maintain mm. that level of joie de vie after two glasses, wouldn't it be better to stay at two rather than going to four, yeah. five, six, opening up the next bottle? And to, to just stop and think about what's it really going to be like and maybe it would be better. You'd feel better, you'd feel happier, you'll enjoy yourself more mm, if mm. you stick at a few. Because it's, because we don't say don't do it. I mean, no, that's, that's just not Shrinkology. No. Shrinkology is all about the real world and, and managing yeah. properly. Yeah. But actually, it might be worth mentioning the types. You mentioned briefly the Shrinkology yes. types and some people watching this might not know um, mm. that when we wrote Shrinkology, the Shrinkology solution, we we came up with six different types that Meg, who's a very highly qualified psychologist, has done, has been able to categorise eating types so that you are very likely to fit into one of these six yeah, types. Absolutely. And um, it's really, really fun to find out which type you are. So go onto our website, www.shrinkology.co.uk and do the free quiz and then you'll know which type you are. And then in the book, there's loads and loads of type specific tips and well tricks, oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, which you can then find uh, that really, really do fit your type. So it's like a personalised kind of plan. So um, let's just look. There's another comment um, from Jen. Uh, Ten Jack Daniels, to be honest, is better than one. Well, okay. So let's just <laughs> tweak that. Hang a bit. on. This is Jen, who's <laughs> lost how much weight following the Shrinkology plan? Are we on? You know, it's a stone. How much weight does Jen lost? She's but our biggest success story so far. So She's go, Jen. Great. If you can do it on Jack Daniels, you can do it on anyway. But let's be realistic about it. Okay, so if that's the decision that's made, then the choice will be around the mixer. So perhaps have no mixer or a diet coke with it rather than a you know full blown coke. So she's lost about... twenty eight pounds. Yeah, Jen, you're amazing. Hi, amazing. Vicky. <laughs> They're absolutely amazing but that is about being realistic and we do know ourselves we really do we need to sometimes do a little bit of groundwork around it and you can use the food and mood diary which we say for all types that is a key and we do say to do that at the weekend too because often if you're just uh, charting your food and mood during the week you're missing out these important little triggers uh, without a doubt. And the food mood diary, again, just for people who are yeah. up to this for the first time, it's writing down everything that passes your lips, mm -hmm. food and drink, and how you feel at the time. So it's to yeah. try and catalogue or to find your own connections between, I mean, you can't try and convince me that every time you put the spoon into the ice cream, it's because you're hungry. Because sometimes yeah. ice cream is about feeling bored, mm -hmm. grumpy, rebellious, and chocolate can be about, um, I deserve it, uh, it makes me feel fab. I mean, there are so many reasons why we eat and the Food Mood Diary will really help tease out your own profile mm -hmm. alongside knowing your type, your Shrinkology type. Um, and one of the things we found through doing polls is that mm. the most common type we call the soother. Yeah. And yeah. this is basically people who are very um, emotional eaters, is that right? It's, uh, I would say it's your classic comfort eater, um, but it's in a sense that these are people who are very compassionate people. These are people who are the givers in our world. And sometimes that really takes a toll. And one of the consequences could be that an individual doesn't really take care of their own needs. Um, so for soothers, we do quite a lot of work around um, self-care actually, and dealing with any underlying emotional 
issues that are leading to sort of um, overeating but also comfort eating. So if you're a soother mm -hmm. and you're worried that you're going to blow it all this Easter yeah. weekend, yeah. what would you recommend? Okay, so there are some sort of short, sharp tips, but I truly, truly encourage everyone to, to go to the book um, and to do some of the longer term uh, techniques. So for a soother, there is one called putting the past to bed. And um, it, it can be slightly distressing, but it's absolutely worth working through the process. So to do this, you need to think of a time in the past that was quite upsetting for you. Um, and it's best if you can write this down on paper because there is a, just a huge body of research that shows emotional writing is incredibly therapeutic. So think of this time in your life where you felt um, distressed. Now take a step back and look at the objective facts of the situation and write those down. Then next look at the emotions, the judgments and the perceptions surrounding this event. Finally, what you need to do is ask yourself, why am I holding on to this memory? And it's incredibly important to do that. And I say it can be somewhat upsetting, but that's where the writing can really come in and be in itself soothing. Now, this is a deeper psychological technique to remove some of the associations we have with the past so that we can move on and not go to food to soothe. Does that make sense, Louise? Yeah, I mean, I can, I can see it's a, it's a difficult exercise. Yes. And I think what we've found is a lot of people will, will get the book mm -hmm. and go, I, don't, I just want a quick fix. I want a quick mm -hmm. fix. And actually what you've said yeah. right from the start is, just a little bit of homework, a little bit of groundwork. And for soothers, it's all about the emotional, what is the emotional core that has has triggered this kind of eating behavior? Mm -hmm. And so for every type, there will be a, a kind of groundwork um, exercise yes. to try. And you've still got, what's today, Wednesday? You've still got tomorrow to get it sorted. So you could make radical changes for the weekend. Mm -hmm. But um, and you can at least start on the path. And that's the thing. What, the reason why um, Shrinkology is so different is that it's not a quick fix. This is um, an approach to change your relationship with eating for good so that it's a really enjoyable relationship. And that brings us on to this weekend, which actually should be really enjoyable. It's all about the chocolate. <laughs> actually, we've got, a, we've got a question here from Vicky saying, I've got lunch uh, out planned on Friday and Sunday and a barbecue on Saturday. Should I skip breakfast? Um, I can't read the rest. That's what I was trying to find my phone to read it. So with the tank. Oh, okay. but um, it, that's tricky. That a weekend like Easter weekend is harder than mm. most weekends mm. because you could have a social event on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, that's and four days. Yeah. So, uh, but w but you mentioned earlier mm. today it's important not to be too hard on yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. So, oh. We're going to look at the, uh, the ah, graph we have the graph. in this book. Now let's see if you can see that. So this is the behaviour change curve. So now, you think you're going to get better and better and thinner and thinner by going yeah. like that. In reality, it goes eh, 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 eh. this being Easter weekend. Yes. Eh, eh, eh. So it, there will be ups and downs. And it's not a linear progression. No type of behaviour change is that lasts anyway. So we need to expect that there may be some pitfalls, some relapses as it were, and that is absolutely okay. And we can deal with that. And we can actually plan for it as well. Yeah. So planning for those, how many meals out was it? Was it every day? But every day. And actually yeah. that's, Vicky, you're right. You, you're being, you're clever there because if you're having a big meal, you could probably get away without breakfast. It depends what diet plan though as well, doesn't it? Yes. So if, but it's if something... intermittent dieting, yeah. intermittent fasting is, is, is a one that's proven yeah. very successful. Yes. A lot of people can, can stick with it quite mm -hmm. happily. 
And so if you know you're going to have a big meal in the evening, mm -hmm. you can you could just skip through breakfast. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world. It's not the most important meal of the day. The science is changing on that now. Mm -hmm. um, but if it if that if the thought of skipping breakfast drives you absolutely insane, so if you're a traditional, that may be very very difficult. Yes. Yep. So then you could have a very light breakfast or something yes. really small just to convince your brain that breakfast is happening. Mm -hmm. And also the other thing is if you're hosting a barbecue, um, don't don't fall into the pattern of of producing masses of stodgy carb laden fatty foods have masses of salads have mm. loads of light foods as an option and 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 there isn't there's no rule that says you have to pile your plate really high mm. the whole point of this weekend is the sociability it's mm. not it's not eating until you burst and so mm. it's kind of shifting the balance and it there are there are many clever ways and we talk about it in the book there's clever ways of dealing with a buffet and clever ways of dealing with a barbecue that ensure that you that you don't end up walking away feeling distended and and really like you've eaten far too much but the real key is that we don't have to um, turn down any invitations we can engage in all these incredibly important social activities whilst being on a weight loss and then weight maintenance plan because actually one of the only predictors of weight loss success is social support. So having those social connections with other people is incredibly important, incredibly important. And it, it is about the pre-planning to a point and sticking to a plan to a point. But if on a day you just go completely off plan, just do not beat yourself up. And don't do what somebody uh, mentioned on the Shrink, shrink Squad mm -hmm. this week, which was don't weigh yourself on a Monday after a really bad weekend. That's, that's only going to cause trouble. If you know you've had a bad weekend, just get back on track on the Monday and then weigh yourself after that. Because otherwise, Absolutely. it's so hard. Because we need to approach all, all of um, these diets and for every single type with a huge amount of self-compassion. So if, if this was your friend and if they were telling you that they were having difficulties at weekends and then weighing themselves on a Monday morning, probably as a friend you might say, well actually give yourself a few more days you know, before you go on the scales. And um, from my point of view, scales have pros and cons as well. So there may be other sort of measurements you want to look at in terms of your progression, how your clothes feel, but also things about how you feel in yourself. Is your energy increased? Do you feel less stressed? All of these things will happen with the Shrinkology techniques. Yeah, but specifically this mm. weekend yes. is all about chocolate. Yes. So there is one piece of advice that we want to impart mm -hmm. on the Shrink Squad, and that is make the switch to dark chocolate. Yes. If really, it's going to be hard for some people because some people will say, I can't live without dairy milk or Galaxy is my thing. And there it are is... other types of chocolate. <laughs> lint balls. There are lint balls. Yeah, <laughs> okay, we're going on, definitely. Sorry. But if there's so much research mm -hmm. showing that health benefits of dark chocolate, that it's now I've read this week that it's really good for dementia and cognitive impairment. That dark chocolate can actually help reduce your risk of dementia, not too much. Um, and mm. it's full of polyphenols and antioxidants, and there's some really good stuff in dark chocolate. And the beauty of it is, is you just can't eat it in the quantities that you yeah, could. Yeah, because milk what did chocolate. that study show? Uh, a piece of dark chocolate, twenty minutes, twenty before minutes before a meal, meal? will mm. set off the hormone changes that make mm. you eat less later. So, um, I, I, one of the tips in the book that I particularly like is to get a bar of very high quality dark chocolate 70% at least yeah you can get 85% break it into individual squares mm -hmm. and put it in the fridge or the freezer mm -hmm. and when you get a craving for chocolate or or if you want to stop yourself eating so much at the meal have one square and quite often it will just satisfy the chocolate craving it'll give you a boost of nutrients so what so what's the thing about putting it in the fridge or the freezer? It's because it takes longer to melt? Yeah, if it's oh. frozen, it'll okay. take even longer to eat because you can only oh. chisel tiny bits off. That's really interesting. Mm. But, um, and also, it's not getting soggy and it's harder to eat when it's cold. That's cool. as, as Chocoholic said. <laughs> so, uh, so that, so, and then, so this Easter, it might be too late for this weekend, but if, or if someone says, do you want an Easter egg, say, I'd like a dark chocolate Easter egg. Mm -hmm. And you, I swear, once you've, made the switch you'll never go back yeah but you need to jump you need to leap into the cold water and, yeah and really enjoy the dark chocolate yeah. absolutely so that's a really good practical tip but oh do we have a question from kurt let's just look 
Okay, so Curses is one of the few Shrinko blokes I mainly drink at the weekends uh, at sporting events. So that's incredibly interesting um, from that perspective. So let's look a little bit around what that what that means. So for a lot of individuals, uh, especially men, being in that sort of situation is about bonding. And so making changes to what you would have done in the past can feel very intimidating. Saying to your blokey friends, hey, I'm not gonna, not gonna have that pint, can be incredibly difficult. So what we would suggest is going back to that question about really is having the 10 points or the 12 points as good as just having four or five and making that decision there. But and as you bit... said before, making the decision before you get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Because once you have four or five pints, mm. there's no decision making no, happening. No, no. And also, I do think delaying. So when we make health behaviour change, we are making a conscious decision to improve our health. So delaying that first pint, there's only so much time you're going to have at the match. And that can really make a big difference, a, a big difference. And actually if you do that you can cause a really positive chain reaction where everybody in the group does that too and they often will thank you for it yeah so we've got there's whatever your shrinkology type mm. the book is full of tips that could get you through weekends mm. and special weekends like this weekend and that there's full of a, a long-term tips short-term tips um and then the fundamentals some of the things that are really important so this weekend if you're eating a big meal just make sure that you 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 are trying to get as many nutrients yeah, on your plate as possible, um, and that there'll be less room for the sort of the cake. And have a piece of cake, God, you've got to enjoy yourselves. Mm. And shrinkology is all about long term, about, about finding a way, finding yeah. a way that will get through the whole the whole of your life that you've been kind to yourself mm -hmm. and that that works long term. Um, but what I would really say as well is that for weekends and for holidays. Um, they are almost more about what you've done in the week or the month in the year outside of the weekends and holidays that then impact. So if you're being kind to yourself during the week, if you're managing your stress during the week, if you're on a diet that really suits your personality during the week, you won't go sort of off the wagon. Right. In no such need to go crazy. Fashion. Yeah. Yes. And, and finding the diet to suit your personality is key. Is key. Mm -hmm. And so finding your shrinkology type mm -hmm. is key. Absolutely. So we're going to be around this yeah. evening. We're going to treat ourselves to a small glass of sherry. And so please do pump your questions onto Absolutely. the Facebook group. And also if you, if you come to this video uh, later on, just put your questions in because Meg and I are constantly in the shrink squad chatting with people, catching up, finding out how you're getting on. Um, and so we're more than happy to answer your questions. And please share your experiences because yes. we're all here to support each other, basically. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you have a great Easter weekend. Have a wonderful Easter. Bye! Take care. Bye.